Hi everyone, my name is Veronica. I use she, her, hers. I'm a rising senior in Berkeley College and I am an American Studies major. Hey everybody, I'm Audrey. I use she, her, hers. I am a rising junior in Brantford majoring in neuroscience. We're both academic strategy peer mentors and today we're going to be talking about owning your education and what that might mean. Yeah, so owning your education can look a million different ways. Um, but at the very, at its very core, it means you making decisions about your education and how you want it to look and feel like. Not only does everyone have their own style of learning, but also everyone has different goals and experiences that they want to achieve while they're at Yale or at any point um, in their life. So when we say owning your education, it means taking action and being proactive in order to get the best experience and education for yourself. So. Audrey, do you have any um, own thoughts about what owning your education means? Yeah, so I think it means separating what your personal goals are versus what others might expect of you. Like, for example, expectation from family and friends. So like personally, as a pre-med, I'm like surrounded by lovely, but also neurotic pre-med friends. And um, a lot of them are also taking like like similar hardcore paths that they might mo know more about than I do. Um, and also in terms of family, family expectations, I'm fortunate enough to have parents who encourage me to do whatever I have passion for, but I'm sure that some of you out there might have family members who push their own agenda on you or have different career expectations that you might want. So it's important to remember that it's your education and so you can decide what you want to do. You can decide how much time you want to spend on academics as a whole versus like the social aspects of college life, which is also very important. And you can decide your own post-graduation plans as intimidating as it sounds. Um, you can decide whether you want to seek extra help for one particular subject and distribute more time to that subject versus studying for like another subject that you might not need as much help with. Um, it's still good to seek advice from people who might know more or might have uh, different thoughts uh, if you really don't know, but ultimately you should choose the goals that you have for yourself. Maybe you can take um, the advice of different people such as like uh, residential college big sibs or academic advisors. Uh, I've even sought like my own parents in, in terms of like what I should do to make the most out of my education. Um, and of course, your own peers as well, because you're all going through the same thing. So it's it's okay to consult them as well. Um, do you have any thoughts about that, Veronica, like seeking your own uh, peers? Yeah, well, just to that end, um, I think that last point that you said about reaching out to people is super important. Um, and like at the end, it is your own decision, but some of the best advice you can get is from your peers and um, other mentors. Um, but uh, one of the constant struggles or problems, hurdles that you have in owning your education that I know I've had and a lot of my friends have had is this thing called imposter syndrome. If you don't know what that is, imposter syndrome is basically a feeling where you are doubting yourself, your abilities and your success, and you're constantly afraid of being exposed as not good enough or not deserving of what you have had. Um, so imposter syndrome is really normal um, and there's a good chance that you or someone you know like your friend is going to experience it at some point um, and you shouldn't feel bad if you ever kind of have these doubts in your mind. However, imposter syndrome can get in the way of owning your education because you're constantly comparing yourself to your classmates and thinking maybe like oh should I be doing this, they're doing this and I'm not like I'm not good enough when we talk about owning your education it's kind of remembering to focus on what you want and not necessarily what other people are doing so not only is constantly like comparing yourself to others with imposter syndrome uh shifting your attention away from yourself and your own work it's also just unhealthy and really really exhausting um yes so to combat imposter syndrome and the way that it gets uh, in the way of owning your education and just other tips to own your education. Um, Audrey, do you have any advice? Yeah, so 
In terms of what I might suggest and what's worked for me and other people, um, showing up to class really helps. <laughs> I know some people don't take showing up to classes seriously and like might rarely go to class or just like not prioritize it enough, but showing up to class is uh, definitely important for, uh, you know, just getting absorbing course material in general, but you'll have homework. And so like classes are going to be important for that. And for uh, homework, it's going to be applying the knowledge that you get from lectures. So in terms of like actively applying your knowledge and uh, asking professors or TAs useful questions, you should definitely go to class for that. Uh, they help you fill in gaps of where your core essential knowledge that you might need uh, for building blocks and to understanding more difficult course material. And so being in class is definitely better than just taking like notes from your friends or even just taking notes in class word for word. You might be taking notes that aren't useful to you and that's not like the great, like the best use of your time. So you should be engaging during class, uh, mentally show up as they say, uh, ask questions and write actually like helpful notes for yourself. Um, I like to come up with like fun mnemonics or like just not doodle, but make uh, fun drawings that like might help me remember certain things. And also remember to get help when you need it, whether it's uh, professor office hours, TA office hours, um, help at the Center of Teaching and Learning, and also us, Academic Strategies Peer Mentors. So yeah, uh, anything else to add, Veronica? Um, yeah, so I just wanna reemphasize uh, how important just showing up is. Um, I think I've learned the hard way of how not showing up just physically to class, um, and then also just not mentally showing up to class can hurt you later on um, when you're studying for finals or you know writing an essay. So it, I really do think that just showing up is a big chunk of the battle. Um, and so once you're there, things are easier for yourself then and then for your future self. You're gonna be so much more thankful that you're there and taking notes and being um, engaged. And again, with what you said about needing help, that's just as much about owning your education because you need to be proactive and know when you're not as strong in some areas and there's nothing wrong with asking for help and it's just showing that you care about your education to do what you need in order to um, grow in, in those subjects. Um, but yeah, other than that, there's, those are just some tips from two people. Um, I definitely recommend that you reach out to friends, to family, to mentors, to professors, right? Get advice from them to see how you want to shape your education. Um, just a quick plug again, like Audrey mentioned, is one of those tools or resources is the Academic Strategies Program um, through the Center of Teaching and Learning. Um, Audrey and I are both mentors. And there's a whole bunch of us that are always very happy to meet with you. Um, we have workshops and we have one-on-one -on -one sessions and we'd love to help you own your education as much as we can. Um, any last thoughts? No, not really. So, yeah. All right. Thank y'all for watching. Bye.